Hi there, welcome to another encouraging word, a brief word of encouragement from the Bible. On Sunday in church, I read from a very familiar passage of Scripture, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and that talks about reconciliation. Verses 18 and 19 say this, All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, God reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them, and he has committed to us the ministry of reconciliation. Reconciliation has to do with bringing two sides together. People who are once opposed who are separated, and God brings them together. Um, Colossians chapter 1, verses 22 and 23 also explains this, saying, At one time you were strangers to God, and your minds were at war with him. Your thoughts and actions were wrong, but Christ has brought you back to God by his death on the cross. In this way, Christ can bring you to God holy and pure and without blame. And then Ephesians has a fairly extensive passage on this whole thought of reconciliation. We read starting in verse 12, Remember that at one time you were separate from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel, and foreigners to the covenants of the promise, without hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Verse 14, for he himself is our peace who has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility. And then in verse 14, he says, he, Jesus, came and preached peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. For through him, we both have access to the Father by one spirit. And finally, verse 19, it says this, Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household. Of course, he's talking about the fact that as believers, Gentile believers, they had been shut out of the promises of Israel, but God was in Christ reconciling both Jew and Gentile into one body being part of God's very own household or part of God's family. We see a progression according to the Bible. At one time we were at war with God. Our minds were at enmity with God. We were strangers. And through Christ, we became friends with God and even part of God's very own family, his very own household. Now we are co-heirs with Christ. How did that happen? Well, Romans 10 again explains it. The same thing, verse 10, for if while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Jesus paved the way for us to be brought back into a relationship or fellowship with God. At one time in the garden, Adam and Eve were very close to God, had a very close relationship with God, the way God intended it to be. Sin ended that relationship. Sin separates us from God. And God could not and would not just wave off sin, just forget it, uh, but rather a price had to be paid in order for reconciliation to take place. And of course, that was through Jesus Christ, God's own son. This allows us to be brought back into relationship with God, not by what we've done, but what, by what God has done for us. This is our message. This is the hope that we offer to people, that they too can have a relationship with God, just as we do. And this is what we celebrate whenever we take communion. Uh, we are reminded of the sacrifice of Jesus so that we can be brought back into relationship. As the Bible says, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting people's sins against them. You know, as we consider the National Day of Truth and Reconciliation tomorrow, uh, dealing with uh, God, uh, Canada's uh, Indigenous and non-Indigenous people, we also need to remind ourselves what God did for us uh, through Christ. If reconciliation can take place between God and man, 
then it can happen with various peoples in our relationship, whether it's between indigenous and non-indigenous people or uh, people in, in church families who have been separated because of uh, division or whatever. Um, God wants his followers to be leaders in the process with the message of reconciliation. You who are at enmity with someone else can be brought back into relationship. You really can't have true reconciliation without the gospel. And we thank God for what he did in our lives. And we ask him how we can share this message with other people. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you today that through Christ Jesus, we who were once enemies can be brought back into relationship with you, that we can have fellowship with you, that, Lord, we are now co-heirs with Christ. And, God, you have poured your spirit into us, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. And we thank you for that, Father. It's amazing. It's not anything we could have done on our own. But through Christ, you have done that for us. And we are amazed by it, and we're thankful for it. Father, we ask you that you would give us wisdom and understanding as to how we can share this ministry of reconciliation with others. Not only have you done that through us in our relationship with you, but God, you want us to be ministers of reconciliation, to share the hope that we have in Christ Jesus and the hope that people who were once enemies can be brought back into relationship. Guide us, I pray. Help us as we consider us. We give you thanks and praise today in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, thanks so much for watching. I trust that this week as we uh, talk about the Day for National Truth and Reconciliation, it's also reminding us of what God has done in our personal lives in regards to our reconciliation with God. So I trust it's beneficial to you. God bless. Have a great day.